Hey, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's 10 o'clock, and live from the K-10 studios, this is K-10 News at 10. Right now on K-10 News at 10, Yacht Mess. It's a dramatic rescue at sea after a boat catches fire and sinks. Plus, searching for a killer. Local police try to piece together what happened inside a home where two people were shot to death this morning. And all hands on deck. We're very excited about uh, summer 2016. Local marinas on the lake are open, ready, and eager for a busy summer. We'll show you why they're hoping to make a big comeback. K10 News at 10 starts right now. Good evening, I'm Kathleen Jordan. Welcome to K10 News at 10. And I'm Tom Crespo. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Atoka County. We're told two inmates have escaped from a prison. Well, the Atoka County Sheriff's Office says the inmates walked away from the Howard McLeod Correctional Facility about 7.30 tonight. Now, the prison is a minimum security facility. Authorities across Atoka County are looking for Joshua Allen and Justin Hughes. Allen is a white male, around 6 feet 4 inches tall, weighing about 200 pounds with tattoos on his back and his face. Now, Hughes is a white guy, around 5 feet 10 inches tall, about 165 pounds, and he has a skull tattoo on his back. If you see the pair, authorities say do not approach them, call police. Well, police in Ardmore have a manhunt on their hands after two people were murdered in their home this morning and the killer got away. Investigators say 28-year-olds Aaron Lavers and Anthony Rogers were shot and killed around 3 o'clock this morning in their home in the corner of A Street and 2nd Northwest. Relatives say someone broke into the men's home last night and stole some electronics but police won't say if they think robbery was a motive for the murders. Now, police say they're following up on a few leads. If uh, anybody has any information in uh, reference to this homicide, we're asking for um, the public's help. Um, we have a few leads. We're following up on them. But uh, any information would be greatly appreciated. And the victim's bodies were sent to the state medical examiner's office in Oklahoma City. Deputies in Bryan County say they're looking for a teenager because they say he stole several items. The Bryan County Sheriff's Office says 19-year-old Tanner Barton is wanted for grand larceny and two counts of knowingly concealing stolen property. They say Barton is connected with an investigation from February when at least two four-wheelers were stolen. Those four-wheelers were found in Mead and Cartwright, but investigators say there could be more property that they don't know about. Tanner's starting adulthood off on the wrong foot. And right now he's going a million miles per hour and probably not thinking about what he's doing but, and realizing what the, the long-term effects are of the crimes that he's committing. Investigators say Barton is not dangerous, but he could continue to steal property. He's believed to be in Calera or Mead. If you know where he may be, authorities ask that you call them immediately. The summer is right around the corner and local mariners are hoping to make a splash. This time last year, our area was hit by devastating floods. And now mariners out on Lake Texoma and Lake Murray say it's crucial to have a good year. K-10's Michelle Choi is live in the studio with the story. Michelle? Tom, last May, majority of businesses around Lake Texoma were underwater. But despite some heavy rains we've been re getting recently, local marinas say they're excited for a fresh start just in time for Memorial Day. Other than a few finishing touches, marinas around Lake Texoma are open for business. We're very excited about uh, summer 2016. A much calmer scene compared to last year when a majority of businesses were underwater. Christy Bliss has worked for Highport Marina for over a decade and recalls the moment a few raindrops turned into a devastating flood last summer. It started to rain about May 13th and it rained and continued to rain and rain some more. Waters rose to more than 640 feet. I have never seen it that bad. That was the highest that it's ever been recorded on the lake. Record breaking numbers that flood at the infamous island restaurant on the marina and shut down all boating recreation for the season. This walkway was completely underwater. Um, 
the fuel dock itself floated up. Since then, the marina has been repaired and is now ready to go. I'm just really excited that our, our uh, clientele can come back to the lake this summer and can bring their families and enjoy their boats, enjoy the lake. Much like Highport, Grandpappy Marina and Denison wasn't exempt from Mother Nature's fury. This time last year, you know, we had uh, the water coming up, the rains didn't, didn't let up, and, you know, we just went into a flood stage that, uh, unfortunately stuck around for most all summer. A memory still clear as day for general manager Jason Cottingame. We expect uh, periods of flood, but last year was one of the worst ever. Buildings and boating docks all throughout the marina were damaged. Now, if you really want to get a good picture of just how high the waters rose here at Grandpappy Point last year, just take a look at this building. That blue marking up there is 20 feet high, and yes, that's how high the waters rose. But this year, Cottingame is optimistic Grandpappy will make a full recovery. During the off-season, we've remodeled uh, uh, our restaurant, our offices, uh, our shops, uh, got everything back in, in shape. With people already coming out to the lake, anticipation is on high waters for both marinas that are ready for a summer full of boats, sun, and lots of fun. And of course, with storm season still going strong, more rain is expected in the coming weeks. But both Grandpappy Point and Highport Marina say they're well prepared. Reporting live in the studio, Michelle Choi, K10 News. And as she mentioned, we do have rain headed our way tonight. Yeah, let's get a quick check of the forecast now with Alan Mitchell. Alan? Yeah, a little bit of rain moving in right now across the area. It's not much, but a check of uh, dual max radar again, indicating uh, some scattered showers right along the Red River, particularly uh, Grayson County, but a larger complex out to the west of uh, Lawton, Wichita Falls. That's also moving in tonight too. Uh, no severe weather, really nothing very heavy, but rainfall amounts will probably average about one half inch with it. It appears Hillary Clinton is back in the win column after a close race in the Kentucky primary. And a new poll shows Donald Trump is coming up fast on the outside in a potential head-to-head -head with Hillary. NBC's Steve Handelsman has the latest from the Bluegrass State. Nominee, mathematically speaking, yes. You it know, was close in Kentucky delegates, but, until know, the call. Take a look. Hillary Clinton's jumped ahead by nearly 3,000 votes statewide. We <laughs> NBC News can now project that Hillary Clinton is the apparent winner. Having lost to Bernie Sanders last Tuesday, Clinton made a big push in Kentucky, welcome. where coal mining families favored Sanders or Donald Trump. I am the only candidate, the only candidate with a plan, a $30 billion plan to help coal country. She campaigned hard in Kentucky, trying to keep Bernie Sanders from beating her again, even though he said today he will not quit the race. Her concern is momentum for the November election. The weaker that she looks, the more vulnerable that she looks, the more difficult it will be for her to amass a wide coalition against Donald Trump. The Clinton lead over Trump narrowed to just three points nationally in today's NBC News SurveyMonkey online poll. More motivation for Clinton to notch a couple of wins tonight. But Trump again is stealing headlines, formally declaring his net worth is $10 billion and bragging that's the most ever reported by a national candidate. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Washington. The next primary is a week from today in Washington State. SEDCO says their work is done along Progress Park. They hope their latest projects will help traffic flow smoother along the busy road in Sherman. They installed a large pad next to Progress Drive, so 18-wheelers will have a space to wait while they unload. It costs nearly $150,000. To make it safer, they also repaired the railroad crossing at Howe Drive. And as you go south from Sherman, land sites, especially rail serve land sites, become more and more scarce and we have the available here to, to market our property to new companies and new jobs. They say these improvements were necessary because the businesses within the park will continue to grow in the future. The proposed Texoma Health Foundation Park in Denison got a big shot in the arm last night. The city council approved the sale of $7 million in bonds to help pay for the project. Council members say they'd like to see construction start in the next 60 days. The $14 million project will be built near the new Gateway Village at Highways 75 and 691. Plans call for several baseball and soccer fields and a running trail. This morning, volunteers in one Texoma town battled the rain and started work on a new playground that's supposed to be built in just five days. 150 volunteers from students to city council members to other people that live in Gunner showed up to begin work on the city's new playground. Gunner Parks Foundation says for the past two and a half years, they've been working to raise the money to build it, and the playground will be built in honor of Jane Robinson. She was killed in an accident back in spring of last year.
been the playground. Um, Mrs. Robinson had passed away and her family um, donated a large amount, so we do have a memorial within the playground um, that will be dedicated to her. The playground is expected to be complete for a grand opening on Sunday, but they still need some help and tools. If you'd like to help them out, we'll have a link on our website, ktown.com, to show you how. Still ahead at 10, a young girl fights for her life when she's attacked by a pit bull while she's walking to school. We'll see how she managed to survive. Plus, a local man gets a second cha chance at life after a stroke nearly stopped him in his tracks. We'll show you what kept him alive. And Alan's back with your full forecast with Katon News at 10 Returns. A science teacher learns a lesson in security when a student hacks her email account and sends porn to all of her kids in school and their parents. We'll show you how everyone reacted. That and more. So ahead. You're watching K-10 News at 10 with Tom Crespo, Kathleen Jordan, Ashley Prendergast with sports, and Chief Meteorologist Alan Mitchell with the weather. And a few light showers passing through the area right now, but a little bit heavier rainfall will pick up um, in the next few hours as it moves in from the west. I'll show you radar again in just a moment. You can see a little bit of water there on the uh, tower camera lens at this hour. As we look up Highway 75, check of radar once again, dual max radar. Uh, we're actually seeing three separate upper level disturbances. Each time one comes across, well, it generates some showers and a few thunderstorms. It's not going to be anything very heavy uh, this evening, but uh, again, we could pick up about a half inch of rainfall. All looks like about it. One, uh, the first one right here, crossing uh, the Red River and back to the western.
around Gainesville. And then we go further west, uh, the uh, Altus region, Childress, Texas, another one. And then on its heels, coming uh, into the far western part of the Panhandle, a third one this evening. So each time as one comes across again, we'll see rain increase a little bit, and then that'll clear out, and then another one moving in. Going in a little bit closer here this evening, uh, once again, not indicating anything strong or severe or anything like that. Don't anticipate anything, but uh, again, uh, just some uh, light showers for us. Maybe a clap of thunder or two, but that'll be just about it. Storm chances, though, will be with us uh, through Friday, particularly Friday morning, and uh, things will probably clear out somewhat for Friday afternoon, leaving us with pretty nice weather this weekend before the next weather system arrives, probably sometime late Sunday night. 69 today at the North Texas Regional Airport, 10 degrees shy of the uh, normal force, and that will be about the case again tomorrow as well. Most of us uh, only in the 60s across the area. Now, the storm complex that moved through last night, you know, it developed out in the panhandle, uh, baseball-sized hell, about three tornado reports with it, weakening as it tracked further eastward, but by the time it made it into our region, after around 2 o'clock or so, it began to move in, and uh, some uh, heavier rainfall, about an inch generally west of Highway 6975, and a half to a little bit less across southeastern portions of the area. Lake Texoma still generating 24 hours a day. Elevations about a foot and a half or so above normal. Floodgates are closed at this hour. Water temperature went up a couple degrees, 70 degrees right now. Showing 58 in McAllister, Ada, you're at 55 degrees to 61 in Ardmore, 57 in Sherman and Denison, and only in the 40s way out west around Amarillo. Now our satellite review again shows these systems is kind of stacked up like uh, train cars. They're almost uh, moving in across the region. Uh, once uh, it scoots out of the area by early in the morning, it appears most of the day tomorrow, I think, will be generally dry and will be in between our uh, weather systems until another one begins to show up on Thursday. That uh, promises to be a little bit heavier across uh, much of our region, even a risk of uh, seeing some a uh, little bit of hail and some gusty winds. Mid 50s in the morning, upper 60s on average tomorrow afternoon. And as I mentioned, most of Wednesday, once we get past the morning hours, will probably be storm free. But another round on Thursday, and then we'll try to clear it out for you pretty much for the weekend before it turns stormy again next week. I think Monday could be our next chance of seeing maybe a little severe storms. A lot of rain. Oh yeah, off and on, seems like it. All right, thanks, Alan. Well, still to come, it's a close call when a man is trapped inside a building after it collapsed on top of him. We'll show you the rescue. And doctors say an Ardmore man who suffered a stroke died for minutes before they brought him back to life. We'll show you what that man says he saw in those moments.
It was a day he was supposed to find out if his wife was having a boy or a girl. Instead, the 31-year-old Ardmore man suffered a stroke and his family was told to prepare for the worst. In the end, it was an emergency brain surgery that saved his life. Marianne Rafferty has a story. It should have been a joyous day. Tyler and Nancy Osteen had planned a party to announce the gender of their unborn child. Instead, the day took a tragic turn. Tyler remembers intense pain on the back of his head and running off the road into this ditch just a couple miles from home. I picked up my phone, tried to call 911. I couldn't, I tried to open my door handle, but I had the stroke and I couldn't open it with my left side. My left side was just wiped out. Tyler had suffered a stroke, paralyzed on his left side, and his brain was bleeding. He could feel himself fading away. They said I died for about six minutes. During that time, an image he'll never forget. I saw a man walk towards me with a bright light behind him. He was in a white robe. It was my uncle who had died three years prior. But Tyler didn't die that day. Instead, he was rushed by a medical helicopter to OU Medical Center to undergo emergency brain surgery. They had to uh, cut open his head, um, get the skull out, pull out all the blood that was in there. Then doctors placed Tyler in a cold, coma-like state. His family told not to touch him or talk to him. Any agitation could be detrimental. And that was like the hardest part, not to hold his hand or you know tell him I loved him. But after two months, Tyler woke up on his own. He was later released to a rehab facility to relearn things most of us take for granted. He is able to comprehend and talk to you and can go back to functional life. The day he ran off the road, another driver named John had stopped to help and called 911 since Tyler couldn't. Months later, a reunion with John, Tyler, and the Osteen's new baby son. These days, the Osteen's savor every moment. Missed the whole OU season, missed deer hunting, but I gotta teach my boys those things now. And that was Marianne Rafferty reporting. Tyler says he feels good, but his road to recovery isn't over yet. He has another surgery coming up to reconstruct his skull. He plans to return to his job at Windstar Casino by his 32nd birthday coming up this July. Still to come on K10 News at 10, we check in on the Eastern Conference Finals. Did LeBron and company rule the court? Highlights of the Raptors-Cavaliers game later in sports. And see you later, Alligator. A Texas family gets a visitor from the swamp. We'll show you what happened to the unwelcome guest.
There was an uproar at a junior high school in Arizona after parents, staff, and students got a series of pornographic pictures apparently emailed out by a teacher. That story tops tonight's Pinpointing the Nation. The emails contained pornographic pictures and were sent from an 8th grade science teacher's school account. But officials say it wasn't a teacher who sent them, it was a student. You could say the student was trying to embarrass that teacher. Uh, why else would you do that? School officials are trying to figure out how the student hacked the teacher's account. He's been suspended from school and he could still face criminal charges. It was a frightening ordeal for an 8-year-old girl in California when she was attacked by a dog on her way to school. The girl says she thought the pit bull was going to kill her. It came towards me. I thought it was just going to go. I thought it was just going to go past me, but it actually, I never thought it would drag me by my hand into my leg and out to my ear. The girl suffered injuries to her face, ear, hand, and leg and will likely need to have plastic surgery. It's believed the dog escaped from a neighbor's house, but it got away after the attack and nobody's been able to find it. It was a dramatic rescue in Philadelphia after a man was trapped under rubble when a building collapsed on top of him. It happened at a home that was under construction after it was classified as unsafe. It took fire crews almost an hour to get the man out. He's expected to be okay. There was smoke on the water and fire in the sky after a boat caught on fire off the coast of Malibu this morning. Two people and a dog were rescued by the Coast Guard from the 45-foot yacht before it went under. There's no word yet how that fire started. And finally, if you live in Florida, you can't be too surprised if you find an alligator in your backyard. But if you live in Houston, it's one of the last things you'd expect. Wildlife crews came and removed the six-foot gator, but he didn't go peacefully. They put him into the back of a truck and moved him back into the swamp. And that's tonight's Pinpointing the Nation. If you'd like to see tonight's Pinpointing again or any others you might have missed, just log on to our website, k10.com. Coming up next in sports, the Thunder lead the Western Conference Finals. Here from Russell Westbrook on his Game 1 performance next. And now here's Jimmy Fallon with what's coming up on tonight's Tonight Show. Hey guys, Miley Cyrus is my guest today. Folks, we have Josh Gad, Anthony Bourdain, and Mario Batali. It's a great show. Do not change the channel. It's good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. What do you mean, tighten the head? Yeah, they all have names that are just. There ain't nothing more going on there. How's that? No, man, I hear the feedback in my ear. Shit. Shoot. <laughs> yeah. I've heard people make fun of, like, Americans. How, do, how does, ah, uh, I can hear it. And, you mm -hmm. know, the same kind of, ah, now, ah, with a is that better? Accent, it's like, it's like, wow, is that what we sound like?
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a good mic. That's, That's a great mic. Out. Is that for your main anchor, <laughs> your main female anchor's mic? <laughs> Now sports with Ashley Prendergast. The Thunder have created a looming cloud over the Western Conference's top team, the Warriors. OKC came storming back from a 13-point halftime deficit to beat Golden State. And now they're up one game in the series. MVP Steph Curry was cooking last night with 26 points and a career, playoff career high, 10 boards. But the Warriors just missed too many shots down the stretch and lost their first game at Oracle Arena this postseason. Kevin Durant had 27 points, including a jumper that put the Thunder ahead 105 to 100 with just 30 seconds left on the clock. Russell Westbrook hit a pair of clutch free throws with nine seconds to go and finished with 27 on the night. But his first half was not so good. Russell, obviously, in, in the first half, didn't shoot the ball particularly well. Um, had some turnovers. But the, the belief, the competitiveness, the ability to come back with resolve and continue to battle and fight. The time of the year where, you know, you're going to get hit, but you got to find a way to get back up. Um, and I think uh, my teammates do a great job of uh, constantly keep trusting in me and, and trusting my abilities to help us win games. Let's check in on the NBA draft, lottery draft tonight. Philadelphia 76ers have won the NBA lottery and will have the number one overall pick in June. The Los Angeles Lakers finished second Tuesday night, but also felt like a little bit winners. They have dealt, they would have had to deal their pick to Philly anyways if they've fallen out of the top three. The Celtics, with a pick dealt to them by the Brooklyn Nets, remained in the number three slot. Nobody moved up in the lottery, which is good. The draft is set for June 23rd out in the big Apple. Now we're going to check in on the Eastern Conference Finals. Cavs hosting the Raptors. LeBron James and company ready to go. First quarter, Toronto up four. DeMar DeRozan pulls up, hits an easy mid-range for the Raptors, taking a 15-9 lead. Later in the first, Raptors still leading. Kevin Love finds LeBron James, because you know what he does. He dunks the ball. Cavs within four later in the first. Love with the ball again. Pulls up, drains the three. Game all up at 21. Same score now. DeRozan shot is blocked by LeBron. Kyrie Irvin taking it to the other end. Pace lays it in. Cleveland remains undefeated in the postseason for a 115 to 84 win over Toronto this evening for game one. It's just 100 days until the college football season is back in our lives. Thank heavens, the season. OU kicks off their schedule as the first Saturday football game of the 2016 season on ABC. Part of ESPN's triple header of national games played that day. Oklahoma will play Houston and that kicks off at 11 a.m. down at NRG Stadium in H-Town. Both teams are ranked in the way too early top 25, but it's never too early to start looking ahead. And just to reiterate, 100 days. You can start counting down. I have. And former OU quarterback and Heisman Trophy winner Sam Bradford made headlines once again out in Philly after demanding to be traded and then retracting his demand. He's going to stay put. He has since returned to the Eagles OTAs and finally discussed his trade demand, stating he was hurt that the Eagles drafted rookie QB Carson Wentz. That's a shame. But since the head coach Doug Peterson has assured Bradford he's the starter come week one for the Eagles, so he's uh, got that going for him. Yeah, he's got that going for him. And so the Cowboys will see him once the season opens this year. All right, thanks, Ashley. And we've still got some rain in the area. Yeah, we do have and We check radar for you once again. You can see a couple different areas moving through. Just some uh, light to moderate showers out to the west, a little bit heavier complex. And there's one even behind that. So looks like everything will be out of here after tomorrow morning, leaving us with a cloudy, cool, but generally dry uh, Wednesday across most of the area. But it, uh, we're not through with it yet. There'll be more on the way for Thursday and perhaps even Friday. All right, thanks, Alan. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good evening. Ha <laughs> ha